Hey, my name is Sean. Welcome to Echoes in Eternity Bourbon. Have you ever owed anybody an apology? Over the years, people have come up with some truly awful apologies. From classic non-apologies to evasive excuses and flimsy corporate... So, you know, today they had the Alabama bourbon drop, you know, typically in this area, you know, we're on Eastern time, AKA fast time for those people that live in this area. And if you go up the road into, you know, Opelika, Auburn area, they're on central time, also known as slow time. Uh, but what would generally what happens on a bourbon drops is they start they open the store an hour earlier now it wasn't a huge drop this month nothing crazy but i happened to be dropping my son off at band camp which is hysterical to me but he but you know on on the way back i thought hey, you know it's 30 minutes from i'm opening up I, i'll pick up a bottle you know not this bottle but I'll, I'll pick up a bottle um for a friend of mine he really likes his wife really likes blends you know i'm like okay you know we can get it at msrp i'll get it to him you know Stuff like that. So I get there. There's two other people there. You know, Jackie, it was awesome. But he was number one in line there. And, you know, we, you know, they were sitting in their trucks and stuff. And I was sitting there. And I thought, dang, you know, 10 o'clock rolls around. It's supposed to be opening up. And they don't open up. And they don't open up. And I'm like, dang. And so I'm like, whatever. So about, you know, 10, 20 or so, one of the ladies shows up. A few minutes later, another lady shows up. And I'm thinking, maybe they're just running late today. What's going on? You know, so I can put a little short out there, disappointed in Alabama ABC. You know, it should have been open on time today at 10 o'clock. Time comes in, and it's funny because not a lot of people understand. You know, if you're a regular, you understand that the first person there is the first person in line. You know, and, you know, so, you know, you always see the cars rolling in, so we know who's one, two, three, or you have a list up there or something like that. But today, you know, it's small store, small drop. We just see who the cars are there, and it's, you know, we had a lady, and I think it was probably her daughter-in-law or daughter, they pull up, you know, a few minutes before the store's open, gets up, stands in front of the store, and they, the ladies come to unlock the door, and they still go in, and we're like, and wait a sec, ladies, we, these people were here first. Well, they weren't first in line. And we're like, you know, ma'am, these people were here first. Um, and so the ladies actually at the ABC were really, really cool. They're like, look, you know, I, when we got here, there was only three people here. I know the red car was here. And I'm like, look, I was third. You know, there was two gentlemen ahead of me. You know, they'll get their stuff first. And, and the lady was, you know, you could tell she was miffed because she thought she was going to pull up at the last minute just because she got out of the car. And we're standing there first that she was first in line. Unfortunately, it didn't work that way. So kudos to the uh, Phoenix City ABC for taking care of that for us. And as we walked in, we, you know, we were like, yeah, we thought you guys were open at 10. They said, no, they told us to open at 11. So this had nothing to do with the employees there. So if, I, you know, I, I was frustrated earlier a little bit, not too bad, but I'm like, come on, guys. It was ABC that made that decision, you know, there. And the ladies were super nice. And like I said, they helped us under, you know, make sure people understood the line and stuff like that. So I thought that was really cool as well. So very cool. And I was actually, you know, I was out running around earlier today. And I happened to find, I was like, you know, I was like, ah, let me go to some of my local stores. Ran into my buddy, Chris. I'm going to go over to his uh, house here in a little bit and get to try some of the uh, different rye that I got in. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. River Roots sent me three different rye samples. I tried to through, went through them last night with, with some awesome people. Uh, 18th Amendment, I can't thank you enough. I, I absolutely love it out there. Um, went through round one. I go through it three different times. I'll be doing round two with my buddy Chris today. Looking forward to that. And then a third round coming up. But today's pour is Detling. Uh, absolutely looking forward to this. I did not get this at Spillway. Um, I found someone, I, and I made, mentioned, hey, I was looking for this. They, they saw a video. They reached out. And I'm like, yeah. So we found something that we could trade, um, you know, and make sure it was everyone was worth their while. I was able to get, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go into their bottle, but I was able to get them a neat bottle, I think, and I'm interested to see what they thought on it. Uh, but was so excited to get this. This is a, a six plus year, a six year plus uh, bourbon from Detling. It's Alabama, which I'm very excited about. It's got beautiful dark colors on it, man. I just, I, I'm looking forward to that. 
I've had some Detling stuff in the past and I've really liked it. I'm a fan of Detling, but this is my first bottle that I've owned. Um, and it was picked by the Mississippi Sippers. If you haven't checked out some of their stuff, you know, check them out. But also, you know, check out the Spillway stuff. A lot of the bottles that were selected for Spillway were from the Mississippi Sippers. And I think that they did a great job. Um, so looking forward to that. But let's get into this. So from, if I remember right on that, like you didn't put what's on there. They use generally six grains a lot of times. Um, so, you know, I'm excited about that. Uh, I don't see a breakdown of the grains anywhere on here, but that's cool. But this one's running about, I think, 114 proof. Yeah, right at 114 proof. Um, this was aged for 74 months, so a couple months past six years. Spillway sippers on here, single barrel select. Very cool bottle. A very dark color on this. This is a nice deep brown color on this. And that's something that you get in this area right here is if you age something six to plus years, it's almost like 11 or 12 years up in Kentucky. It just, it, it does an amazing job of, of that temperature climate cycle of, of penetrating that bourbon into that barrel and doing some amazing things on there. Man, it's just sitting on the, sitting on there. It's getting some nice long legs forming on there, but at the very top, it's just kind of clinging onto the top there. Man, and I don't know <laughs> if my mind is just playing tricks on me because of how dark it is. And then they've got, you know, the nice brown for the wax. But the first thing I get off this thing is this great chocolate note. And I'm like, mind, are you playing tricks on me? But I don't know if it's the coloring and then, of course, the wax. But man, first thing I get is a nice, beautiful chocolate note off of this. I actually get a little bit of a, like a coffee note on this, too, which is very, very nice. getting some of that getting some of the the oak and the barrel char in it now so this thing is just getting really really rich and dark on this which is a very it, it's exciting to me because i like that rich dark flavors on the back end of my palate and that's the first thing i'm kind of getting on this and i get like a dark dark you know like a, a brown almost like cane sugar type of thing going on there so i'm getting very dark intense notes right off the bat on this and if you can see how this is just starting to form down the sides now very very viscous the legs are just starting to form on this so i expect a great mouthfeel i expect this to be very oily I get a nice deep vanilla on this too. So everything I'm getting is very rich, deep, and intense. And it has to do, I'm sure, a lot with that temperature cycle. So let's get into the palette on this, see what we got. Wow. That was literally like drinking brown sugar with some cocoa got a little bit of pepper on it not a whole lot but just super sweet intense right up front huge fan of that i love some sweet bourbons There is something in here that is just so neat and unique. It's, you, all, you know, like I said, I'm getting some of the coffee notes, getting the intense brown sugar on there. I'm getting some cocoa, but I'm getting some different, like a, a rye spice type of thing. But it's almost like someone took some four roses and just let it age and intensify. I mean, it, it, it's got that, it's got that kind of a, and it's not a medicinal herbal thing, but it's got some kind of an herbal quality to it, but a super sweet herbal quality to it. That's just insane. And I'll tell you what I like about this. 
Hey, from what I understand, if, if I remember right, he only uses like a 3% malt on this, but the malt that he has is super intense, super rich. And I think it's that malt flavor that I'm getting in here that I'm just falling in love with. Now, not a lot of people are big malt people. I am. I lean into malt. This malt that he has in here lends to some amazing flavors on this. It is definitely that malt on the back of that palate. You get you get some a little bit of pepper. You're getting some of the the char, a little bit of some oak coming through there. But that malt just kind of follows through and gives you a very nice finish. Medium, medium, long finish on this. It's better than a medium plus. So you, you get this nice finish through your chest. It's not burning you up, but it just sits there. And it's just like, wow, I'm here. I'm dark. I'm intense. I got some great flavors. But it's funny because you, that, that darkness just kind of settles in the back. It's almost, it almost reminds me a little bit of a cigar on the back of this. Just the way it kind of settles on the back of the palate. And just like the smoke's just kind of rolling around back there. But it's not smoky. It's just this dark, luxurious taste on the back. Man. I've got to get some friends some pours of this. Because <laughs> they're not going to believe me on this. So, you probably weren't expecting this in the middle of a video. But... I didn't release my video yesterday, but we had winners today, and I wanted to announce the winners for this Detling for the two ounce pours on there. So I'm just kind of putting this in the middle of the video. Detling two ounce pours winner, David Sweet, you, you won from the comments. Uh, and then we had Matt Compton who won from the Patreon. Uh, that went out a little bit earlier in the Patreon video. Congratulations both. Um, I can't wait to get you a two ounce pour of this right here. I'm a big fan of this. Uh, another segment, which I, you know, I just found out a little bit about yesterday, you know, Baker Drinks, huge friend of the channel and personal friends to me. Um, you know, Laura's going through some health issues right now. You know, Troy's put it on there on his channel a little bit. Things look very, very good and promising there, but please keep them lifted up in thought and prayer. Um, you know, it's tough as a, as a family when someone has a health issue going on, even though the prognosis is good, there's always, there's always a little bit of a fear there too. And they have a young daughter together. So make sure to keep her lifted up in prayer too. But y'all have an amazing day and back to the scheduled video. For something that's only 3% um, malt, man, it is, it is just brings some incredible, incredible flavors on this. So you get that sweet brown sugar up front. You get some cocoa and some chocolate going on front. Get a little bit of that vanilla. It's really strong on the nose, but not so heavy on the palate. You get some uh, you get some nice herbal qualities. It's very dense, but man, that malt kind of takes over in the back, which I really, really like. Like I said, it's like a nice dark cigar that's kind of rolling on the back of your palate there for a while. And that finish just keeps going and going. This is something that I really enjoy. Now, is everyone going to like this bottle? If you do not like malt flavors, it's probably not going to be your thing because that malt on the back end of it, it just is fantastic to me. Now, if you're, if it malt's not your thing, you're probably not going to like this. I've got a few people in mind that I need to get this samples to so they can say, okay, I really like that. Or what the heck was that? Uh, Derek, I think you're one of them. <laughs> I'm saying I, I need you to try some of this. Uh, I got a couple other people in mind as well. Man. There's certain things when you drink them, you can almost taste like generations of stuff. I don't know how long he's been doing this. I have a feeling the family's been at this for a long time. But he has taken a lot of care into this for being a small distillery. This right here is just blowing me away with what he's doing over there. I'm going to have to take a trip there someday. Man, it's Saturday, three-day weekend this weekend. I hope you all have that time off. Not all of us are going to have that time off, but I hope you have that time off. I hope you're having an amazing time with family and friends. You know, 
we're looking forward to spending some time with some friends. You know, I'll, I'll see Buddy today. Um, Saturday, we're going to go, or Sunday, we're going to go over and visit with some friends. Uh, they, they had rented a lake place. We're going to go hang out with them for the day, have some nice snacks, I'm sure a pour or two, um, play on the water a little bit. You know, Monday's always kind of been a day of reflection for me. Um, you know, and I'll put this out there. I know it's kind of short notice and I, because I've been out of videos for a while. If you have someone who you would like me to say their name during a Memorial Day video, just send it to me, Echoes in Eternity Bourbon at gmail.com. You know, sometimes it's good to put someone's name out there that you're remembering them. Uh, I had somebody else that sent me some names and I said, do you mind if I say them during Memorial Day? And he said, I think that would be a great idea. So if anybody else has some names that they would like to have put out there for Memorial Day video, please let me know. We want, we want to have a time of remembrance for them and thank them so much for their sacrifice for us. You know, people tend to forget that, you know, when you put your name on that line, you're saying up to and including the loss of my life. You know, and that's something that it's, that's heavy duty and not a lot of people may realize that. But unfortunately, some people have experienced that loss of that loved one. So we want to remember those people during that period of time on Monday. You know, you still want to have your barbecue. You still want to have your porch. You still want to have a good time. But take that time for some remembrance and some reflections on people who gave everything for our country. Man. I hope when you have some off time, it's slowed down for you. I hope you have that great time to do some things. But most importantly, y'all, cheers and God bless. Y'all have an amazing day. Thank you.